Normally, a military aircraft uses its brakes to come to a halt after landing. But there's a little difference with a giant plane like the Boeing B-52 Strata Fortress when it comes to a stop. Well, something not everyone knows about the B-52 is that it requires more than simply brakes to stop after landing. The stopping needs the use of a parachute known as a drag chute. However, this parachute does not magically pack itself. So while the pilot, co-pilot, and navigator are only the beginning of what it takes to fly the B-52, here is when other crews play an important role in bringing the huge B-52 to a halt using the drag parachute. The drag parachute was initially designed by the Russian professor and parachute specialist Gleb Katelnikov in 1912, who also invented the backpack parachute. During the mid-1930s, the Soviet Union launched its first aircraft equipped with drag parachutes. Currently, the drag parachutes have been installed on a variety of jet-powered aircraft, notably the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. Drag parachutes are longer and have much smaller surface area than regular parachutes, resulting in significantly less drag. The drag parachute may be launched at rates that would shatter ordinary parachutes, but it does not slow an object as much as the conventional parachute would. Because of its simpler structure, the drag parachute is also easier to deploy, lessening the possibility of becoming tangled while unfolding or failing to inflate properly. In terms of flight equipment preparation, the job to pack this parachute is actually not difficult. It is, in fact, more tedious than anything. To complete the task, it needs solid teamwork, consistent practice, a little patience, and a lot of perfectionism. There is zero tolerance for error. This is mainly because, in the Air Force, attention to detail can be the difference between life and death. The presence of pebbles and debris in the parachute might cause it to fail to release properly. The tiniest knot can mean the difference between a flawless deployment and a failure, putting both the pilots and the aircraft at risk. Therefore, this crew is in charge of the lives of the pilots that fly the Strata Fortress on a daily basis. They must jump on top of the parachute and attempt to flatten it out. Although you might think it would be fun, it is far more difficult than you can imagine. The crew needs to stomp on the 90-foot long chute in order for it to fit in a 3.5-foot tall bag. After that, the task is passed on to the maintenance crew, who is in charge of placing two types of parachutes onto the plane's tail. The drag parachute is used for a variety of purposes. It is usually utilized whenever it rains, or when crosswinds exceed 30 knots, and when the runway is less than a mile long. They are also very effective to be deployed for the aircraft landing on wet or icy runways, as well as for high-speed emergency landings. So how does the drag parachute work to stop the B-52 and extend the life of its brakes? As you can see in the video, the drag parachute on the B-52 Strata Fortress is opened after landing. When used to shorten an aircraft's landing, a drag chute is referred to as a braking parachute. The goal is to decelerate the Strata Fortress during landing. It starts off with a pilot chute, so when the pilots pull the handle upstairs, the small parachute pops out, gathers wind, and then grabs the larger chute, bringing the aircraft to a stop. This, therefore, can reduce wear and tear on the aircraft's ceramic pads, which leads to extending the brake lifespan. An example of drag chute deployment that can lengthen the brake lifespan is the NASA's B-52B experimental drag chute, which took place on August 2, 1990, shortly after landing on Rogers Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base in California. At the time, the researchers at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards utilized the modified NB-52B in 1990 to test a drag parachute system that would be used on shuttle orbiters. The B-52 landed at speeds ranging from 160 to 230 miles per hour on one of the lake bed runways as well as the 15,000-foot concrete strip in a series of eight chute deployment tests. A 39-foot diameter braking parachute was employed to decelerate the aircraft, lowering the landing rollout by up to 2,000 feet and relieving load on the brakes and tires. During the chute deployment test, the B-52's instruments collected data to evaluate estimated weights that an operational shuttle orbiter would endure with a drag chute deployed during landing and rollout. The larger the parachute, the greater the drag. Believe it or not, the drag chute on the current B-52 weighs around 200 pounds. 
The landing of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on the 15,000-foot concrete runway using a drag parachute showcased a new capability for the shuttle fleet. The test resulted in the proof that the use of a drag chute on the B-52 assisted in reducing rollout distance and brake wear during landings. The drag chute mechanism was then installed onto the Space Shuttle Endeavour as a result of successful test findings. So on May 16, 1992, the Endeavour took its first operational demonstration of the drag parachute technology. The drag chute was deployed as the nose gear touched ground, making the orbiter come to a stop after a 9,490-foot landing roll. Despite the fact that this fairly typical rollout was the result of conservative mission planning, later Endeavour landings revealed that the drag chute could minimize landing rollouts by 700 to 1,500 feet, leading to extending the life of its brake. It is important to note that Endeavour was the first orbiter to be designed with a drag chute, which soon became a regular feature on the shuttle fleet. Columbia, Discovery, and Atlantis were another three orbiters installed with a drag parachute, while they were undergoing routine maintenance. Currently, the drag parachute is not only fitted on the B-52 Stratofortress, but also on other aircraft like the Eurofighter Typhoon multi-role jet. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.